Tonight, one young Detroiter's life transforms simply by learning to read. It's the power of bringing literacy to students who have fallen behind. See how community outreach and mentoring creates the foundation for one student's future. Meet Elijah, hear his story, and learn about the inspiring program that is changing lives. One Detroit, Elijah's story starts right now. Funding for One Detroit, Elijah's Story is provided by Globe Midwest Adjusters International. Hello, my name is Ethan Gross. I'm a principal of Globe Midwest Adjusters International, located in Metro Detroit, and proud supporter of this program. Life is about opportunities and choices. Elijah is a bright, gentle soul that had difficulty reading. When presented with the opportunity to learn to read better, he chose to do so and changed his life forever. Beyond Basics is an organization dedicated to helping students read proficiently. More information is available at beyondbasics.org. Funding is also provided by Freudenberg and by Stonebridge Industrial Group. Hi there, and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Christy McDonald with One Detroit. Tonight, I want to introduce you to Elijah Kraft. You won't soon forget his inspiring story about how learning to read changed his life. And it's not just about Elijah. You'll hear about the unique tutoring program that helped him and could help many more students. We'll talk to literacy experts about why this program makes a difference. Plus, you'll hear from Elijah, too, and he'll share some of his struggles, his hard work, and ultimately his success. But first, here's a glimpse of Elijah's story. My name is Elijah Craft, and I'm 17 years old, 6'6", six, six, and I live in Detroit, Michigan. I go to Central High School now, and I play football and basketball. I honestly, I want to go to either Michigan State or Alabama State and go play football and get my business degree and my master's degree before I can be able to bring up Detroit and bring in a lot of business and money flowing back into here. I really would love to make sure that Detroit would just come back and be the beautiful town that we used to have. I love Detroit. I, I love it so much. My mother used to always tell me all the time that <clears throat> A humble man that struggle and work hard for everything he do is the best man. The man that's going to succeed and make everything the best opportunity. Because when he gets up there, he knows how to take care of everything and do everything right. The man that gets everything his way and get what he wants then and when, that's the man that's going to fall quick when he gets the cash. Because he don't know how to spend the money right and take care of business. So being able to struggle, work hard, and make sure you do everything right, it's a blessing to do, okay? In school, he'd get, uh, uh, what is it, jazzed, uh, teased all the time, and he'd get, you know, disgruntled and give up and just stop and shut down. I had him tested for dyslexia. They found out that he is dyslexic. He sees his alphabets backwards. When I mean that when I was little, I say, I open the book and look at the pictures and be trying to read the hardest, my hardest. But then at a certain point that you know, any person that gets to a certain point, they're just gonna be like, you know what, I give up. I don't wanna do it no more. The issue of literacy in the city of Detroit is a problem that needs to be taken on one child at a time. And joining me now to take a look at how we can do this is Angela Prince. She is the principal of Mumford High School in Detroit. Angela, welcome. It's good Thank to see you. Thank you. Nice to be here. Also with us is Pamela Good. She's the executive director and president of Beyond Basics. Hi, Pam. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. And Eli Savitt, he is the senior advisor to Mayor Mike Duggan on literacy and school closing issues in the city of Detroit. Welcome, Eli, as well. Pleasure to be here. All right, let's go ahead and start and talk a little bit big picture here. And I'm going to start with you, Eli. Give us a bit, really, the scope of the problem of literacy that we're dealing with in kids in the city of Detroit. Yeah, so unfortunately, and I think we all know this, we have a really big problem with illiteracy in the city of Detroit. Absolutely. Um, there's some recent studies which showed that up to 47% of Detroit residents lacked basic literacy. You know, we've had a quite chaotic educational landscape in Detroit over the past few years, and I think that's really exacerbated mm -hmm. some of the problems that 
we've experienced with illiteracy and it's a major issue because literacy is the building block for everything else that a child can do in life. It's the building block for uh, their career readiness. It's their building block for participation in democracy. Um, and so it's a tremendous challenge and it's one that we really have to address head on. You know, Pam, we look at this and we say, gosh, how did we, how did we even get to this place where we are right now? How did right. we get here? Right. Well, it, it's taken us a long time to get to these percentages that we have. And, you know, there's 93% of the kids in the school system that cannot read near grade level. And so, um, you know, it's taken decades to get to this uh, point. But fortunately, it doesn't have to take us that long to get out of it. You know, as Angela uh, can attest, we're able to get kids who are multiple grade levels behind reading at grade level in just a matter of six to 10 weeks. And so, um, you know, take every child at a time and do that. And within five years, we could see a completely different district and city. And that's, a, and that's a, an amazing testament. And especially when you talk about the time frame that it could take when you finally get a child started. And Angela, Absolutely. talk a little bit about sometimes the frustration that kids have in class and in school when they keep advancing through grades but they're still really struggling and they can't even really even start to learn the advanced work that they're supposed to because they're still struggling absolutely. with reading. Absolutely and that's when we start to see them not come to school and to drop out of school or, or find other things to do that doesn't require reading and so you know, having this program at the high school, which is, I think, very unique within itself, because you don't hear of reading programs like this at high schools. You usually hear them in the elementary and middle school. But when I got to Mumford and saw the need for this, the Young Basics was the first person, people I called, mm -hmm. because we had to do something to right. stop the problem right now in ninth grade before they became seniors. All right, so talk to me a little bit, basically, how this, how this works, Pam. Well, I mean, it is one child at a time. We uh, assess children. We find out how far they're behind in grade level. And some of the kids dramatic, as, uh, yeah. as in Elijah's story. But on average, the high school kids are reading about a third or a fourth grade level. And so we assess them and we give them uh, individualized reading programs. So we're figuring out how many sessions you need one-on-one -on -one with a tutor to bring you to grade level. And we've been testing and tutoring kids since 2008. And so we have uh, you know, developed a little skill at that. But remarkably, we can bring them in one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, that's one key piece to it. That you have to start where they need it and give them a tutor that they sit across from and really teaches them how to read. And so I will have you're to looking say, at a lot of manpower here and teacher oh, power. Oh yeah, well. well, Beyond Basics provides all of the volunteers and they do it within the school. So our teachers are not taken away from the instruction that they have to do in the regular core subject areas because the volunteers do it. And they do a really good job in building the relationship and the self-esteem of the students up who are coming, that they are proud to go to the Beyond Basics room. It's not something that they're ashamed of. There's no stigma There's attached no to it stigma at all. There's no stigma at all. You know, so how many schools are we looking at here now, Eli, that are taking advantage of this program in Detroit? Well, I think that's probably a better question yeah. for Pam than yeah. for me. Okay. <laughs> well, we have uh, eight uh, locations in the city of Detroit. Uh, we're in two, three technically mm -hmm. high schools, the rest elementary middle schools. And we are um, in Pontiac and Taylor as well. Uh, in K-12, we do the work K-12. So when you, let's look a little bit then at the impact overall, Eli, of, of when we're looking at schools, you're looking at literacy, and then you're also looking at the possibility of perhaps some shifting around. Kids are changing schools where they're going. There's been talk of some school mm -hmm. closures as well. And how does that impact, you know, where students are going and how they're learning in the landscape here in the city? Yeah, so it's a major problem. Um, every major study that you read will show that uh, chief predictor of a child's academic success is how stable that child's educational path is. Right. And when you're closing schools unexpectedly, when you're opening schools unexpectedly, and a child is you know, forced to transfer unexpectedly one, two, three, four times over the course of their educational career, we've got some kids in Detroit that have transferred up to 12 times unexpectedly uh, due to the chaotic educational landscape here. That takes a real toll. Absolutely. And that's why I think it's so important that we have right. programs like this that work with kids on an individual level because they're may, they may be coming from very different places and get them up to where they need to be so that they can succeed in life. 
You know, Pam, that's an interesting thing when you're talking about working with one child at a time, that you're also looking at they have a family support system as well that may, may need a little help there mm -hmm. as well. And you're dealing with the whole child and, and where they're coming from and where they are at and where they end up with in the school system. Right. You know, we, we do look at the whole child. It is why we do the literacy enrichment programs as well. Literacy is two components, knowing how to read, but also knowing the vocabulary and being able to comprehend what you read. And, you know, this, we're talking about Detroit right now, but this is a national problem right. that we have illiteracy across the nation. And, you know, it's time. I mean, I think America's ready for this, uh, that we need to look at solving these problems. And this is solvable. Illiteracy is solvable. It is. And, uh, you know, just the years of data that we have and the people uh, around us that can attest to that. And so I think that we're ready to just, you know, start taking these things on and, and then uh, looking back on it. Mm -hmm. The enhanced programming is, is very important because, you know, people would say, gosh, how come they're not already doing this in the school with the classrooms and with the teachers that you already have? Mm -hmm. Why is it so important to be able to have an intervention program like this and help catch kids where they are at, at this point? Well, with schools like Mumford High School, who's on the who was on the closure list, is because the students are not passing the basic uh, M-step exam, and they're not passing the exam because they don't have the skills to pay to to pass the exam. And so, it's important that we catch them at ninth grade and try to build their skills up before they get to eleventh grade and have to take that exam. I I often say that reading is the is their new civil right, and they have to have that reading That's to survive right. in this world, mm -hmm. and that. You know, for us, it's about what happens in our doors between 8 and 6 when we have them go home because their lives outside of school are so different. And so we have to capitalize on every moment that they're in the school to change the trajectory of what happens outside of our walls. You know, I could add to that, that, you know, an example, a, a third grade classroom. You have 35 kids in it, but 33 of the children are not reading near a mm -hmm. third grade level. Mm -hmm. So one teacher cannot give those 33 students what they need and educate the two that are reading at grade level to prepare them for fourth grade. So it's really that there's so many that need help. Otherwise, this is definitely, I mean, the teachers can do this. Mm -hmm. It's just that there's so many kids that need help in certain communities. You know, let's look down the road real quick as our last question here. Mm -hmm. Eli, in five years from now, what could we have here mm -hmm. in the city of Detroit? Oh, and wow. in looking at the system <laughs> and, and kids, what, what possibilities do we have when we have programs like this? Yeah. Well, I think that the first thing we need to do is we need to impose some stability on the educational landscape here. And you've mentioned closures a couple times, and you know we are fighting tooth and nail alongside the Detroit schools to stop those closures. Mm -hmm. Once we get stability, once we get kids that are able to predict where they're going to be going mm -hmm. next year, the year after that, their families know, I think that these kinds of resources are just absolutely critical. We can start catching kids up and getting them back on grade level. Absolutely. And if we can replicate this kind of a program and get more resources into school across our city, yeah. it's going to turbocharge mm -hmm. that process. We could see we could see a real difference. Eli Savitt, mm -hmm. Pamela Good, and Angela Prince, thanks so much for Thank joining you. me. Thank I you. appreciate it. Thank you. you know, coming up next, yeah. we're going to hear from Elijah himself on his personal journey with reading, and we'll also talk with his mentor at Beyond Basics. Here's a closer look at Elijah's story. Beyond Basics, it's our goal to go in and I guess to make it, as I always tell the kids, it's our goal to make sure that when they leave Beyond Basics, they have a love for reading. Let's just do the vowels. So if we just had to review the sounds, okay. It says, eh, mm -hmm. eh, good, eh, good, uh, hawk or um, cradles. Cradles? Why, what, you, what makes you think cradles will win? Because cradles is way stronger. How? Like, cradles. Hulk got the Hulk got the strength of a god. What are you saying? Well, I mean, he beat gods for a living. We have a lot more components that go into what we do. You know, we have, you know, we become mentors for these kids. All right, so it's, it's, reco it's recording now. Today I'm just gonna show y'all how I feel a lot about a lot of things that go on. <sighs> how I feel about Central High School is a great. It's a great school. And most of the teachers in here, they're really helpful. And they, they are great people. They make sure that you succeed and make good things in school. But, man. Half the time when I, like, I don't have a problem with saying what I need to say. Because half the time, it comes out right. But, like, you know when you're in front of certain people and you're trying to talk and then 
Do they you know they know for what they doing? Man, it's hard to, not to mess up. We have a, a kid. Uh, I, I'm not gonna stop calling them kids because they are young adults like I am. Yes. And everything. Yes. So, but to be honest, to have a young adult to start doing stuff, we should have more activities and stuff that make them want to keep the school clean and just stuff. Like what? Like what do you? Think? Like, um, I, you already got bases what I really want, but. Some kids want to have a, a, a debate team. Some kids, really? want, yes. Okay. Some kids want to have a, ch- a, a, a swim team. Because I was talking to some of the other kids, and they were like, "We want a debate team, a swim team. We want to be able to have a chess club. Okay. We want to do it." It's a lot of stuff they say, and they are, they scared to come and talk to some of the. Why? The well, you know, you asking for too much, and you <laughs> just be like, mm. "You're already pushing and trying to make us give you good lunch now." So. Yeah, that, I hear the lunch is bad. It's, it's but, terrible. you know, people say all the time, closed mouths don't get fed, right? Yes, ma'am. So, people have to speak up for what they and that's want. What I, I and I think a debate team and a swim team and a chess club, like, those are all things that we would love for you all to have. We, we enter kids into our program based on their NWEA scores. He tested in below a first grade reading level. So in Elijah's case, his principal made a recommendation and we said, all right, you know, we'll see. He brought him in the next day and I remember when he turned this corner, it was just like, it was like a 6'6 kid. He was, and I'm thinking like, where's the kid? And when he approached you, I remember he gave me this firm handshake and, and it, was, it was so firm and, and he was so respectful. What he said, he just was saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm ready to work. Mr. Rees actually helped me. He taught me the basics. He like he he told me from the beginning. He's like, oh, he, I see what's wrong. Let me help you with the basics first and teach you that first. Let's do long vibes. I E A U O. Good job. Short. E E A U O. Good job. <clears throat> You know, this is probably the number one disability in America right now, is literacy. And, you know, the fact that we can get people reading, children reading at all ages, uh, in just six weeks, uh, it's life-changing for all of us. I still, I love dinosaurs to this day. I don't care what anybody say, they cool, they rule. Just learning the names and being able to talk to other people that feel it the same way as dinosaurs, it's me having a conversation and be like, well, you know, a philosopher has a group of other people and they just hunt in a pack and do certain ways. And being able to just have a conversation and do everything with other people about it is just making it more comfortable. But just being able to read it and understand it a lot more, it made me a whole lot happier. If you could travel millions of years back in time, you will find it difficult to... Something as simple as learning how to read could potentially prepare one of our students to be the next president or the next lawyer or the next teacher. But without these basic skills, then, then they, they, they never can reach their full potential. So to say that you, know, you wouldn't care about a kid who doesn't know how to read is just to say that you don't care about the future of the community that you live in. What I would like the mayor to do and have done is make sure a lot of these programs get the funds that they need and have most of these, like it's a lot of kids that's literally at home that's not doing nothing and they need a lot of, like, it's a Boys and Girls Club right around the corner. It's not that many of those. It's, it's, not, it's no more bustles and stuff for kids that stay active and do a lot of stuff to stay out of trouble. I know last time I looked at the percentage in Michigan alone, a 47% of people in Detroit were illiterate. Have you heard about the school closings? Yeah, I heard about Durfee and Central Post closing. So. Right. So one of the <clears throat> things that people say is that the test scores, and stuff that, and stuff. yeah, is that the test scores. Well, you know, students aren't doing well enough. They're not on grade level. They're not doing this. They're not doing that. And so for that reason, they want to close the school. Um, For me, I'm trying to figure out, if we close all the schools, where are you all supposed to go? Nowadays, it's just nothing for them to do, so all they could do is get into trouble. So if, if I was real to talk to the mirror right now, I would beg them and ask them to bring more money to help out for those people, the kids and stuff, to make them for they won't stay out of trouble. He never, he, he, he never gets lazy. Whenever his goal is in front of him, 
He never stops until it is complete. Elijah will excel and excel and excel and will go beyond, beyond his goals, you know, ever imagined in his dreams. Being able to read and picture everything in your head and have this the, the most amazing fun, it's, I'm, I'm telling you, it's just amazing when you learn how to read. And that clip you just saw was produced by filmmaker Keith Famey. Joining me now is 17-year-old Elijah Kraft, a student at Detroit Central High School. Elijah, thanks for joining us. It's good to see you. It's good to see you, too. Thank you. And also with us is Javier Reed. He is a mentor to Elijah and a Beyond Basics tutor. It's good to see you as well. Thank you, Christine. All right, so let's talk about how this relationship worked. But number one, I guess, Javier, let me start with you and tell us a little bit about where Elijah was when you first started working together. What grade level was he reading at and where did he end up at? Okay, Elijah entered our program uh, below a reading level, uh, but I mean below a first grade reading level, I'm sorry, which is uh, extremely low. Uh, he, for, he's a senior in high school and um, through one-on-one -on -one tutoring, through uh, 10 weeks of one-on-one um, -on -one tutoring with he and I, um, he was able, he's now reading fluently at a sixth grade level. Um, we, and we even have days where we touch on seventh and eighth grade stories, but he's doing, I mean, his progress has been tremendous. What's it been like for you to be part of this program? And, and I can't imagine the frustration at first with, with struggling with reading. Well, <clears throat> at first I felt overwhelmed and it was that, the fact that it was, it was overwhelmed at first. Mm -hmm. And then it's like after I got to know Mr. Reed and everybody in there and I was able to let them know how I was really struggling instead of fronting like I used to. And getting them to know how I was really and help me when I really needed help with it started actually getting easier and it made me be able to do a lot more than I usually would be able to do. Like, I usually wouldn't go on most football trips and go out and ride bikes with my brothers and everybody yeah. and do a lot of other stuff with them because I'll be scared if like I get made fun of or I get lost in the mix of everything. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about the relationship that you guys had to develop together in, in terms of trusting and saying, hey, He's going he's gonna to help me out and, and kind of letting down your guard a bit. Well, first day I met him, he told me that what we're going to do is work hard and work hard to make sure you get better. For when you get older, you wouldn't have to be able to, like, beg and, and like, I can't explain what the direct words he said, but he was just basically telling me that we're going to work hard and we're going to do better. And we're going to make you make sure that when you get older, you can take care of everybody that you want to take care of, like how you want to. So I was like, okay. So then like two or three days after that, it was like, he told me a few things about himself and told me how his life was and what he liked to do and stuff. And it was like, he's similar to me. He, it was like, I know, he sounded like one of my brothers. It made so, a difference. Huh? It made a it real made a difference big difference. So then it was like, okay. So if it, if he's just like a normal person like me, I might as well tell him how, um, how I feel about certain things and how everything. And ever since then, it's just been real easier and make it better. And I can say, I'm looking at you saying, you, you're really proud of this young oh, man. Absolutely. And But to hear the amount of time that it took, a short amount of time to mm -hmm. be able to cover that much ground and to get him up to a sixth grade level really is, sh is showing that this Beyond Basics program is working. Oh, absolutely, uh, absolutely. You know what, I, I actually, I vividly recall, um, it was during Elijah's first week of being in the program. And he said, this is the most reading I've, I've done in years. Yes. And, at that point, all I had did was introduce just short and long vowels and consonants and consonant teams, which is a part of our 27 concepts that we teach. And it, it was just amazing. I mean, Elijah and I, like he said, we, we built a rapport um, because that, that's a major part of it. And having him coming down daily um, with the attitude he did was a major part of it. But yes, he, he benefited greatly at a quick pace with the program. So what kind of support did you get from your family and from your teachers? Well. My teachers, what they, I have three of three teachers that I, Mr. G, Mr. Kim, and my other teacher, Ms. Jones. Mm -hmm. They was mainly telling me that a lot of things in college and everything, you're gonna have to do a lot of reading. So you have to make sure you do better and work harder. Because you know, being like in the district we is, not having all the books and and everything we need, like how we supposed to have it. It's gonna be harder, so we got you guys to know how to read, to make sure you know what you're reading, and know what you're doing. So I was like, okay. 
So that made me work harder to work with him and everything. Not only that, knowing he was a cool person and he was just literally just trying to help me, he doing it for the love of uh, the kids and helping us to be better. It just made me feel even comfortable and it made me want to just work harder and harder. And do you think sky's the limit for you now, huh? Yes, it really is. <laughs> like, I, it's, what he said was better. If you, if I could get better, well, I can't. I forget his, his the way the words he said. <laughs> saying he says that better is not better is something else. But I mean, well, you've come a long way in a short period of time, and it's great to see the relationship between the two of you and what a difference that reading now can make. So thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Elijah. Yes, and thank you, Javier, for coming in as Absolutely. well. Thank and thanks to all of our guests tonight, especially Elijah for sharing his journey with us. The power of literacy is so important for students to succeed and finding programs that can impact those struggling most is key. That's going to do it for our show tonight. For all of us at One Detroit, I'm Christy McDonald. We'll see you next time. Take care. Hello, my name is Ethan Gross. I'm a principal of Globe Midwest Adjusters International, located in Metro Detroit, and proud supporter of this program. Life is about opportunities and choices. Elijah is a bright, gentle soul that had difficulty reading. When presented with the opportunity to learn to read better, he chose to do so and changed his life forever. Beyond Basics is an organization dedicated to helping students read proficiently. More information is available at beyondbasics.org. Funding is also provided by Freudenberg and by Stonebridge Industrial Group.